expected this because I put a bearing on it. I've got I've actually got a little bit of a drill bit stuck in the bottom for now because so I've got a rotor on there and uh, it's still a little rotor spinning. Um, I'm spinning the actual comic, uh, the actual stator instead. But as you can see, uh, yeah, it doesn't run anyway. I'll explain why. Because even with my old Nikon magnets on the end uh, as a blocker, I have ten magnets on the around the rotor, which are the driving magnets. Obviously, what we really need is a commutator to basically um, actuate the magnetic field so that it, it turns on and off. Now, obviously, we, we can't use electricity because it's a magnet motor. But <clears throat> I do know of a way to make a magnetic commutator. And um, that uses um, my concentrics, which... For those of you who have been following my channel for many years, will be very familiar with. The um, magnetic commutator is quite simply um, a magnet array which has north and south coming to a central axis to the central point. Um, by using this this concentric we have a gain on the on the attraction uh, because of the attraction to iron and um, what I'll show you on the scale if it doesn't turn itself off is when I bring the concentric towards the magnets what we see is a, a minus reading because it's it's pulling but it's actually turning the array on which is sending a positive magnetic field out. So we have a minus, that's good because I want it to pull on the concentric because that will add to the rotational speed because while it's pulling on this concentric, it will be sending a positive push on the rotor to drive it. So it will, it will have two forces at work. There'll be an attraction which is pulling and which will also add to the rotational speed and it will also be deflecting uh, a magnetic field. Now to show you what I mean, move it all the way away because it's quite sensitive, this scale is very sensitive. Now <clears throat> I need my uh, camera stand, oh I hate having to get the camera stand out but what else can I do? Um, I'm going to go down the back here and get the flipping camera stand now. Uh, tangled up wires, wires. Uh, right. I'll just put this in here. I'll try and show this a bit better. I have demonstrated this before about weight relative to the magnetic field and all that stuff. Um, Right, we're in the camera stand. Now, the actual magnetic gain, when I put this over the... I need to ask my arm so I don't shake about. Right, I'm trying to... I want to show you this, the weight at the same time, if I can get it on. Oh, I need to... Hang on. The camera needs to be a lot higher. Right, so... Oh, I got too near the edge. Hang on a minute. Right, so if I put this on here, we actually see, will see a deflection on the ball bearing in the middle. As it actually, I need to put a ball in there. Uh, oh, the ball is on the magnets, isn't it? Let me just nick the ball up here. Uh oh, I've got to reset it now. I've got to re zero it. Hang on because it's minus the ball weight. Right, I'll stick the ball on here. Now, this is going to fly in a minute. I can see it coming. Stick this gauge on here. We'll see a deflection. Oop, oh, bollocks. I didn't want that to do. Right. 
I need another ball. Uh, now I'm trying to do this without. Oh, let me just work my bit of flow. Actually, I use my other concentric. I use this other concentric. It's it's a bit easy, it's a bit easier. Um, bit less hassle. I don't need a ball with that one. Uh, hang on a minute. I can leave the ball on here, maybe. Uh, I'll leave it on there. I've got to be zero that. Yeah, I'll just use this con this other concentric. It's the same. This eight one. So I'll stick this bit of foam underneath just so I don't collide with it. Hopefully. Um, so we see a minus. I want a minus. Now we see, we should see deflection on this. If I get this right, I've got the I've got the polarity right here. Right. I'm going to try and hold this all with one hand. So as I come down, we should see it deflect. There we go. I see it moved up. Uh, you can't see the freaking scale now. Ah, hang on. Hang on a minute. I'm trying to get this with one hand. Let me just put my arm around here. Right. So when we come down, we uh, we see a minus reading on the scale, don't we? You can see that, all right? And uh, we have deflection on there, which means it's pushing the ball in the gauge up. You can't see a lot, I know, hang on. Uh, it needs to be vertical so we don't have friction. Uh, hang on a minute. It's not a lot, I know. This, 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 this particular one's very inefficient, there's not much coupling in there. I really need a lot more coupling on this through the... I need to put steel rods in it. I don't know if I can do that while I'm... Let me just see if we've got enough steel rods to stick in these things to improve the coupling, because... Um, oh, hang on. I need to put one there, one there. I haven't got enough steel rods. Uh, it's welding rod, you see. I don't know where my steel rod is. Ah, yeah. Well, I wonder, if it, I wonder if two is enough to improve it. Let's just try this again. I've only got two in there. Right, let's try again. There, that's a lot better. You see the coupling's a lot better now. Look at that. Right, you see the cup, how it moves up. But we've still got a minus reading. That's what I want. So, I want a minus reading. <sighs> now, let me just let me just go and get some more welding rod. Because I can cut this off with my... Um, I cut these off with my shears. I want to cut some specific to this. I was going to make a short video, and now it turns into a pretty long video. This is what happens, you see. Right, so let me just let me just turn you around. Right, so I need to make a bunch of coupling rods through these holes to improve this because it's not sufficient as it is. Ow! Stab my finger then. Uh, right, hang on. Where's my pen? I've got to cut eight of these. Right, I've just marked one off. Just give me a minute. Pen over there. Uh, where's my metal shears? Right. So I've got to cut eight of these off my welding rod. Luckily I had a piece of welding rod right next to me. Um, got one. Um, ah, hang on. I'm using that one as a as a measurement aid. finger off which is very easy to do with this thing things <clears throat> I've 
got four. I need another, another three. Oh, shit. So that's uh, three, four, five, six. I'm hissing like a snake. Seven, eight. I've got eight there, right? Should that should give us a real boost now? Uh, what I've got to do is completely redesign the uh, magnet motor because um, there's no place for me to put the concentric um, arrangement <coughs> in the existing one because these are pretty big and I want to use big ones to get more flux, more drive. So I'll stick my piece. Oh, what, what's happened to these? They're, they're too long now. What? How did that happen? I thought I cut it the right length. Shit. I don't believe it. Oh, bollocks. They'll have to fit. They'll just have to... Sorry for this te Oh, that was the right length. Some of these are too long. I don't know how I did that. It must have slipped. Oops. what a difference it makes. I can cut the extra bit off later. Oh, I've dropped one. one. Where's the other one gone? Oh, I don't believe it. My skill's gone off. Huh. Hmm. That's weird. Did one fall on the floor? I don't know where that's gone. Well, I'm just going to have to cut another one because... Oh dear me. It's got to be balanced, you see. I'm going to mark it with my pen because I don't know what I did last time. How, how did I measure it wrong? I just don't know. that empty one there it is right right we should see a big improvement now we're coupling now uh i'm not going to put the scale on just yet i just want to show you right so i'm going to put this on here upside down we should see hmm it's about the same but oops right put my scale back on so having a minus reading is good because remember we're actually pushing the rotor is going to be pushing the magnetic field on the external rotor assembly. So by having an attraction oh, I want to zero in again. By having an attraction on the drive side it actually adds more to the rotation. So we have it deflecting and you see a minus reading on the scale. So this will switch on and off, you see, because this is being switched on and off by being near the magnets. But obviously I'm not going to be having a great big stack of magnets like this, um, because there won't be enough room. 
so I've got to make this that's why I've got to make this redesign it so I can uh, either make the, the rotor assembly the stator assembly bigger to accommodate something this size or I could use my mini um, concentrics which are these little ones which I might actually do that I might actually use the smaller ones because these smaller ones do the same thing there's no cause in these uh, but they can take the ferrite rings which I showed you previously which I use on my other bubble <gasps> bubble air generator thingamajig so by using the smaller ones uh, I won't get as much pulse much dry but I can use smaller magnets as well which is the main thing so I could use the smaller concentrics or I could use the bigger ones but I need quite a few of them really because there's uh, there's 10 poles on the magnets now that's the only thing you see that's why I've got to redesign some things uh, I have to I'm modeling it in my head at the moment trying to work out what what do I need how many how many should I go I was thinking about three actually I was thinking about three of these three of these concentrics to uh, let me just show you the magnetic field when I bias this on at the moment there's nothing on there look there's there's no magnetic field on there um, well if I stick a ball bearing on it that that's that's where it should be balanced we should but see nothing there there's virtually nothing there right now right but if I um, you see the ball bearing is not being picked up if I bias it on you'll see that my file will actually pick that ball bearing up now look see it's being biased on right I'll back it out now it's not working keep you and now it's been biased on look I don't want to get too close. Now it's on. You can see it's sticking to my file up quite strongly there. Look. So this is what I'm using as this is basically with my idea of using a commutator um, switch, magnetic commutator, because it has virtually no effect down there. It's actually pulling. Oops. It's actually pulling, which is a useful thing because. Um, what I want to do is, if I uh, rotate my camera around a bit, what I want to do is have a. Because imagine the concentrics. Uh, imagine these concentrics were in between these pieces of ferrite. I, I'd have to do away with a lot of these magnets actually. But imagine this concentric ring is actually inside that piece of ferrite with the ferrites inside the concentric rather and we have uh, as this rotor is spinning because this is the stator actually so i can't really show you this properly because imagine this is spinning right as this spins uh, it will turn um, a commutator with magnets on it and the magnets will be passing by the concentric actuating the concentric and turning the magnetic field on and off but well, because there's a, there's a there's there's no drag on it because it's um i can show you on this actually because there's no cause there's there's no metal in here it's up the magnets i can show you the effect on the scale um when we bias these magnets on and off so if we look at the scale because there's no metal in there it won't actually if I get this right in the middle, we can watch the weight on there. It's actually showing a minus reading of... Showing a minus reading of 13 grams, which is virtually nothing, right? But there's a strong field coming up. Uh, obviously the ball's magnetised anyway, so it's not going to be valid for me to stick my gauge on there because there's no core material and we won't get a a true reading uh, the core material has got to be in there I don't know if I've got a ferrite core material I can stick in there let me just see if one of these are loose over here what the hell uh, let me just try and I'm just gonna try and find uh, a bit of ferrite ring that might be kicking about just give me a minute
Right, I found a fire ring. Let's pop this in here. Now, with this ferrite ring in, we should get a better reading on that. Remember, these magnets are very, very weak. They're not strong. If I stick my gauge on the ferrite ring, we should be able to see it deflect this. Remember, the magnetic field is pushing this away, but we'll see a minus reading on the scale. We should do, anyway. Oh, hang on, my hands are the way again. Right, watch the scale and watch the. Ma Remember, we're lifting weight here. These magnets are heavy. It's pushing weight up. So, in theory, you would see an additive weight down there, right? Are you watching? Put it up. So it's knocked everything. Hang on a minute. Right, are you watching the scale? Right, watch, you'll see a minus reading. Oh, shit. Right, I'm trying to get this straight without touching it. Right, see it's pushing the ball bearings up. Ah! It's pushing the ball bearings up, but we're seeing a minus of two thirty oh, about thirty grams. Right. We're seeing about oh, it's very tricky to hold this actually. Oh right, I'm on. <laughs> ah, Right, just a minute. Is it zeroed? Yeah. Right, so if you watch that... Oops! Ah! Stop moving! Stop jumping! Right, are you watching? Right, watch. We're seeing it push the ball bearings away. But, so this weight is being taken by the, the ring. So... But we're seeing minus on the scale. Now that means that <clears throat> we're translating a, an attraction, a drag, into a repulsion. We're converting it from um, a minus into a positive, a minus to a plus. Okay, do you see what I'm saying? We're converting this magnetic field from minus to positive. So this is what I want to use as a commutator, these magnetic rings. I've got quite a few of these lying around. I probably will use the small ones because they're not going to take up much room. The only thing I'm concerned about is these all these little magnets around here that they might interfere with the actual magnet motor in switching the magnetic fields on and off because as you, as you can imagine there's going to be um, there's going to be a, a, a ring that passes by these and because because this doesn't actually feel it's pushing the magnetic field on this side out and it's subtracting the magnetic field on this side so that's why we see more minus we see more of a minus reading on this side because the field from the magnets is being pulled into the other magnetic field so it's going to be closer coupled because the one on the other side is being deflected away and as it moves further away it's a positive field which it, we see it translated as a minus on this side so by using this method uh, we can create a commutator right obviously without the ferrite ring in it oops it's not going to be iron attracting thing it's it's easy you can see that there's actually very little there's only about without the iron there we can see that it's about four grams, five grams attraction, but it's still deflecting a field. But we we can't do it without the far right ring because the far right ring is what's going to focus the fields that we want from these magnets up. So we have to have the far right in there. So, oh, my print finished. Cool. My print's just finished. Now, question is, will I get that one off without it breaking? <laughs> yeah, the other one I did earlier, it, uh, it, it turned into a coaster. <laughs> the previous one 
was a fail because I couldn't get it off the bed and it ended up with holes in it. And I'll show you on I mean. So the previous one I did ended up with bigger holes in it um, because I couldn't get it off the bloody print bed. So a hole there, a bigger hole there. And I stuck a CD on the back, just glued it on temporary just to, yeah, to so I could have a flat surface, shiny surface. So if this rubbed on the, the thing it would slide on it because it's glass so um right so anyway i've got to redesign all this anyway but i want i want to keep it the same size if i can because this is about as big as it'll fit on my bed as you can as you can see over there it's 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 taking up all my bed i might be able to yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna just yeah I'm going to stick with this side if I can, but what I am going to do is design it taller. I'm going to make everything higher up so I've got, I've got room to stick these concentrics in here. And somehow I've got to get the ferrite to go through this hole. So I don't know if I can use ferrite rings in here, but I could probably use a ferrite rectangle going through. Or I don't know yet. I've just... I have to work it out. I am concerned about these magnets interfering with the rotor, as you can see. But obviously, I take these other magnets off, it won't be a problem. But I basically got to shunt quite a lot of magnetism from the central axis, which is going to be a bit of a problem because at the moment I'm relying on a lot of magnetism at this end. But I should be able to shove all that field down these ferrites. Uh, that's why I was thinking about making it a lot bigger, you see. But we should get some rotation maybe not it might not be that good but we should get rotation if i can get this commutator this this has got to be far enough far enough out sort of in the middle somewhere where it's not going to interfere with the actual outside of the rotor part it's got to be set to and i'm going to have to wrap steel or shielding shielding uh, nanocrystalline or something around these rings to stop the magnets in here from interfering with the actual s s rotor right just moving it near the magnets is making it jump so i've got to um shield all these um concentric so they've got to be wrapped in nanocrystalline material to shield all these magnets so the only magnetism we get is from the central core from the middle because otherwise it's these little magnets are going to be a big problem they're going to interfere with everything so yeah so i've got that to shield and that's why i did think about using the big ones but i would have to wrap these up with quite a lot of nanocrystalline material to shield it all and that that would use a lot of material so it might be better to try it with the small ones to begin with because that can keep things smaller because it is a it is a toy actually at the moment it's just it's nothing more than a um trial and error thing really so <clears throat> there's no guarantee but i'm pretty sure that the my concentrics will be able to do the switching without a huge oh, i've got a 1.1 on there i don't know what happened because i knocked it so when this um as i say when these magnets come contact with this uh, take this off here now i'll turn my scale off you saw it was giving minus readings so take that off a minute get this out of the way um let's go back to the big one i'll show you just how much magnetic field we can get on this big one right sideways so there's the big there's the big concentric. You remember these? I, I've shown people in the past these things, but I don't know if people were paying attention. Oops! Uh, come here, you bugger! Right. So when this thing is energized, it can do. A, it can pick up pliers and all sorts. Right. So if if I stick this, let's get rid of the ball. If I stick this magnet on here like that this can pick up a hell of a lot i'll show you what i mean let's get my hammer this is my hammer right it's got my hammer look at that 
Remember, this is a subtraction on this end. It's subtracting right. But it's subtracting on this side right now because we're not pushing. Uh, it's, we're just a piece of iron on that end. But if we were using... If I take this other end off, I might. I better might move my foot out of the way. Oh, it's gone to the edge. I don't want it on the edge. Um, right, if I take this magnet off... Um, hang on a minute. Camera's not right. Take this magnet off if I can. Mm. Uh, it drops the hammer now, you see, because this is only on at this side when this is being biased. And put that back on. Uh, that is pushing, you see, there's a lot of field pushing there, so it's actually pushing on this end instead of pulling. Remember, um. That is as strong as it would be if it was directly on the magnets. Oops, but that end. Oops, right. That's as strong as it would be if it was directly, if it's, it's directly on the magnets, obviously. But when we're doing that, we we might be pushing there. But this is this is actually not subtracting anymore. It's pushing. So instead of pulling on this. It's pushing on there, whereas with this, when I put this on, on there, oh, that's come out again. It's actually pulling on there while it's pushing on there, you see. That's the difference. So we're turning subtraction into positive, positive um, field. And obviously, if you get the right, oops, if you get the right balance between the magnet and this you can get it in a center point where there's actually it feels like there's no pull and no push at all it feels equal but it's, it's ah shit but it's still pushing up the back so if i get this right in the middle it's about here somewhere it's about there some somewhere it's it you, you can't really feel it it doesn't feel i can move this past here and it doesn't feel like like it's there's anything there I can't feel any force there at all it doesn't it just it's not pulling if I put the magnet on uh, let's see my ruler right there's my ruler if I stick it on this ruler like this it slides along look sliding on oops shit. Ah, too close if you get too close obviously it's going to grab it now if you get that there and I swing this pass here it's not pulling or pushing it push it a bit nearer it's not pulling it along the mag along the um, ruler but it's turning this on and off even though you can't see it I don't know if I can show you that um, Let's see if we can show you this. I've got this the right way around, hang on. Yeah. Hmm. I'll move it a bit nearer because it's not turning on. There we go. So now look, it's turning it on, look. If you watch the gauge. Oh, shit. Too close. Hang on a minute. <sighs> Right, mm. right, it's turning it on, getting the right distance. A bit closer. But it's not actually pulling the magnets in at this point it's sliding a little bit but until it gets to there then it flies so you get to a certain point a certain distance there's actually oh shit there's actually no um it doesn't feel like it's doing any work but it, but it is it's turning this this on so yeah that's what i'm counting on for the commutator i want to get it so that i can get it so that it's not actually feels like it's doing anything i'm pulling all my pins out that i put in 
<laughs> um, so that's what I want to do. Thought I'd explain it a little bit. It's a lot of work though designing this stuff, and I've been trying to figure it out and the best way of going about it. And I was thinking about having them at an angle, like at that plane sort of pointing out towards the outside of the rotor so that the fields or these little magnets would actually be in a different on the but almost vertical axis thinking about doing it at that angle with a actuator timing magnetic disc that's spinning around turning these things on and off for the timing think about um the thing on a car that turns the ignition timing it's similar it's a similar thing, but it's, instead of electrical, it's magnetic. So, similar thing. Um, uh, yeah. So, that's all for now. Um, I need to make these pins look sharp and glue them in so they don't keep flying out on this thing. But, yeah, it was just a test for now, anyway. Uh, I think all them pins are going to... Stick to the fire. Oh, does my print come off the bed? I think everyone's eager to know because the last lot didn't. The last one didn't come off the bed. It all shut, broke and everything. And I used a hammer and chisel and I couldn't get the damn thing off the bed. It was a friggin' nightmare. I've got to move the camera a bit because I can't get. So will this come off the bed? It's cold, it's cool enough. It should do because I, I put primer down. I, it, I think it will do. This This ring's coming off quite easy. This border ring, I'm just taking the border ring off at the moment. It's coming off fairly easy. I uh, put too much ABS slurry down and I couldn't get it. It was like it was super glued to the bed. It was a friggin' nightmare. Is it cold enough? Oh, look! Yeah! It came off easy. That's what I want. And look at that, my paint, most of my paint. Most of my primer is still on the bed. Hardly any of it on the print. That's, that's brilliant, because I wanted to keep the primer on the bed. Most of it's still on there, so that's good. It means I can use that again. Because uh, it really stinks. I hate having to spray primer on there because it really really stinks pretty bad I'm going to print the accessories now and uh, I am Gonna go into my print program uh, Let's see that's the temperature graph, it's dropping right now at the moment. Uh, hang on. Let's see, that's warm the bed up. Right, I'm getting I'm doing I'm doing it from computer because I had that error earlier where my power lead came out of the printer and I ended up with a coaster, so I thought I'd better monitor everything and see what's going on. So I've got the bed warming up now. Uh, let's see, composition code, what is that? I think those are the accessories. Yeah, I could print them directly from the computer, then you can see what's going on. So these are my accessories. These are the bearing um, holders and the extension for the... Um, for the magnet holder and all that but do I need that now do I have to print those right now because I've already decided to redesign everything so maybe it's pointless printing these parts however I will need these two again for the new model that I built so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reload those because I can use those the magnetic sh the magnet shroud probably use that so I'll use the magnet shroud and the hub bearing uh, and 
So I don't know. Maybe I'll just put the hub there in. So I don't know if I need the magnet shell because I'm going to redesign it all. So I'll get rid of that. So I'm just gonna move that down here. I'm gonna just print that because I probably need that anyway because it's for the it's it's going to be for the bearing and I'm going to need the bearing lit. Um, shroud thing early. I'll stick that onto the um, uh, I'll stick that onto the um, the stator to give extra support for the bearing so it doesn't fall out um, so I'm going to need one of them anyway so I'm going to slice that just going to do that there's no point in printing all the other stuff right now because I've got to redesign everything, so that's gonna that's only gonna take forty minutes to print that. Um, what's the temperature like? How far away? My bed's still warming up. Uh, my target temperature for the bed is one hundred and ten. Well, it's actually 105. Mm. I, I think I'll end the, the video stream actually. Uh, I'm just going to go to server. Uh, we should print that. Oh, it says idle. Why is that? Did I slice it? Yeah, I did. Oh, here it is. Print. Oh. Hang on a minute. Have I got queued jobs now? No. Oh. It's, 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 uh, yeah. 15, it's estimated time. It's 15 minutes to... Print that estimated printing time 1457 40 minutes 57 seconds. So, uh, yeah, I'll wait for the temperature though, it's got to get up to 105. It's nearly there actually. Mm. So, anyway, um, at least the new, um, hang on a minute, oh, zoom out. <sighs> At least the new state uh, rotor came out really good, much better than the other one. I've got these little nubs to get off. I'm probably going to use my chisel on the middle ones because I can't get my knife in there. Uh, where's my knife gone? I don't know where my knife's gone. Oh, there it is. Uh, I've got some holes in the printer bed and the aluminium and so but every time I print something it's it's an advantage sometimes is it holds things down but I've just got to go around it like this and chop these freaking things off every time it's sometimes I try to put my prints where there where there are no holes but when you're printing a large thing like this a, a really big area and you want to make sure it doesn't come off the bed this is quite, these little plastic holes in the holes in the bed are useful because then it holds everything down really well. Uh, camera's a bit. So, but these four, I can't get to it unless I use my chisel. Because they're too, my knife blade isn't big enough. Not too difficult to get off, but this uh, this rotor I'll be able to use it on the new model when I design it. 
Uh, I don't know if I need full population of magnets in this, but well, we'll figure that out later. So I've got some little cracks, which um, I'll seal it with some acetone. Um, I can. Oops, I've dropped my file. So well, I just got a bit of acetone in the cracks, and it fill it seals them up like that. Don't know why that happened, but sometimes you do, you get these little hairline cracks around the edges. So, yeah, I'm not giving up hope just because the current magnet motor, the first design I did, doesn't work. It doesn't mean to say I can't make it work. All we need is a magnetic commutator to switch it and if we can do it without any drag or any um, slow down it will work won't it it's got to do um, because the way I see it I, I, I think I should draw this actually try and draw this map this out so you can see what I mean um, it will also get clearer in my map mind as well so if I get a piece of paper um, I'm going to stick that in my acetone vapor thing that you wrote and I'm going to put that in the acetone um, vapor thing in a bit. I think I better... i use my other piece of paper to try and explain it. Right, um, I'll use this black pen. Right, so, oh, right, so what we ha will have is, um, a oh, I can't draw for shit. I'm gonna draw around something, hang on. What can I use to draw around? Right. If I draw around this container, right. Imagine that's that circle is the stator, and. We have our ferrite, one of our ferrite rods. It could be round, it could be rectangular. I haven't decided or yet. I might get some more ferrite rods. I might have to buy them though. But imagine that we've got, it's a bit wide that, the rule is too big. My rule is too fat. So, and the stator is. Um, we need a bigger ring now, a bigger circle. Um, oops, that's smaller. Uh, what can I use that's bigger than that? Uh, oh! Yeah, it's not bad, it's, it's, it's almost in the middle. Right, so our, this is our rotor. R and S stator. So the rotor's got magnets in it. So we have our mag, let's say we have a magnet here, right? Right, this is our, our ferrite, so uh, then we have our concentric ring which is CR 
So a concentric ring is here, right? Oh, we need our space. And we have a magnet, a magnet commutator that's turning on with the rotor, okay? So the, the magnet commutator is attached to the rotor so that the rotor is traveling. So uh, as this comes into play, we have repulsion. Uh, the way to do this is, actually I'm going the wrong way. Let's imagine that's past top dead center. So that's TDC, TDC. And we're, let's imagine we're going this direction. It's just easy because I'm past top dead center there. So we have, um, we have repulsion, I'll do it with some lines. Coming into play and at the same time as the repulsion is pushing the rotor in this direction, we have attraction on this side of the concentric ring. So we have uh, we have repulsion, I'll just put rep, and at that end we have attraction on this end, right? So the concentric, because it's a minus value, do you remember, because we weighed it, so it's actually a minus value. So we have a, magnetic, a magnet subtracting here on... Um, on a what do you call those things on a car that's the um i forgot what you call them you know those things that put the timing um yeah a timing arm thing but with a magnet on it so there's a mag there's a bunch of magnets say uh, let's say we've got uh, three magnets something like that something like that and the I'm not in the middle now, I've run out of space. So let's say I've got three magnets and this magnet is turning, it's biasing the concentric on, which is sending a magnetic field to that one and it's pushing it and it's pulling it on this end. So it's actually, because it's turning, it's actually pulling on this concentric, which is on the stator. Remember the stator, this, this thing is not moving, but this thing is moving and this thing is moving. This is pulling itself towards the, slightly, a few gr tiny grams towards this uh, concentric. And on this side, it's actually pushing on the rotor. So that gives additive gain to its turning, right? Because if this is pulling on the stair, right? and this is pushing, then we have uh, <coughs> <coughs> we have a point where this will continue to push around. I could use, um, I could put an old Nico in that concentric as well to add, to increase the uh, lag time as well, but I don't want to do that. If I, I don't really don't want to do that if I can help it, but because these old Nikos, they tend to be slow reacting. But it's possible, I suppose, because they're quite easy to magnetize. But then that would give me a bit of repulsion each time. It would it would probably offset the um, uh, the minus value. So I probably won't do that. But anyway, that's the idea. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm surprised my ink ink didn't go through all the way to the other side. So that's that's what I want to model up. And, uh, anyway, thank you for I'm up new my bearing thing with jig is is printing. Um, let's see, I just zoomed right in on it. By the way. Let's look at the computer screen. Uh, let's switch over to the virtual. Um, there's a server view. Oop. 
Oops, I want the zoom tool. Uh, it's printing the lines there. Showing you all the lines it's drawing, printing at the moment. Right, so I hope you enjoyed watching. Oh my god, I've been waffling for 55 minutes. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it for now. Um, obviously, I'll try and... Um, I'll try and live stream a little bit of the modelling, but I'm still not ready yet because I'm still working it out in my head. I, um, I'm trying to figure out how to do it with the with these things I'm trying to decide to put if to put them at an angle if to mount them horizontally but with a actuated I'll try and show you like this what I mean. now imagine I've got a big magnet hmm on the end of a uh, I'm zoomed in Anna that's why it's imagine you've got a magnet on the end of a, an arm and it's turning right it's turning past the oops past the it's stuck to the ferrite hang on a minute imagine we're, 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 what I'm gonna put a ruler between it imagine the comic the, the concentric is horizontal and we've got an arm with a magnet on it passing the mag the concentric like this oops like this and that flux goes down onto the ferrite so if this is horizontal it makes it makes it a lot easier to yeah so that's one idea of doing it like that or having it at an angle anyway you can imagine you can see what i'm going through in my mind right now there's just all sorts of um, ideas I've got and I'm trying to think of the best way of doing it uh, I might actually what I could do is print just the actual commutator assembly on its own and not print and not design anything else just make that as a separate module and play around with it and see if i can get it to switch the peels on and off that way i can save myself a ton of plastic if it doesn't work so well instead of printing the whole thing which would use a lot, quite a bit of plastic i'm thinking about just printing the uh, magnetic commutator part separately and then i could glue that on to the um stator uh well onto the rotor assembly later on but i've got to redesign a lot of stuff so it's just a nightmare <laughs> anyway bye for now